Well, what does it mean to be rational? Uh, this essay, Can Men Be Rational? Can Human Beings Be Rational? Um, that can only be answered if we first answer what it means to be rational at all before we can say whether human beings can actually be rational. Um, well, he divides up rationality to rationality in opinion or in theory and rationality in practice. Uh, I suppose the first one having rational beliefs and the second one engaging in rational action. And being rational in opinion, I think, is, is fairly simple. That is, only believing those things for which there's good evidence. Uh, basing your beliefs on uh, something like uh, fact. Let's see if we can find Russell's actual, um, uh, his actual uh, definition. I think it's here on the bottom of page 48. The theoretical part of rationality, then, will consist in basing our beliefs as regards matter, matters of fact upon evidence rather than upon wishes, prejudices, or traditions. According to the subject matter, a rational man will be the same as one who is judicial or one who is scientific. Uh, I think that those terms judicial and scientific are, those are chosen with some care. That is, if you are deciding a judicial matter, say that you're a judge, or you're a member of a jury and you're weighing up the evidence, um, you've, you've, you've got to base your decision on the evidence that is actually presented. If you're being scientific and let's say you're deciding whether or not global warming is, or is a threat to human uh, existence on earth, you, you've got to base it on actual evidence on um, the average temperature rise on actual uh, effects on sea levels, um, on uh, changes in the weather, weather patterns and things like that. You can't decide on the basis if you're a jury about, about whether you want somebody to be guilty or innocent. You can't decide it on the basis of whether or not you want global warming to be real or not. You have to base it on evidence. I, I think that those are two carefully chosen cases or carefully chosen terms by Russell. Um, the rational person is the person who, in matters of belief, acts like a scientist or acts like a juror. That is, what I believe will be based upon my judgment as regards the actual evidence for belief. Th that's pretty simple. Uh, and um, I don't know what you think of that. That's up to you. But I, I think it's a pretty clear idea of what it means what he means by rationality and belief. The, the second one, rationality and practice, I think is a little bit more, a um, little more complex. That is, as opposed to having beliefs that are rational, the idea is living rationally or acting rationally, the practical side. And, and there, uh, he makes some interesting uh, comments about uh, enlightened self-interest. Um, I don't think that he believes that we should always act selfishly, but I think he also believes that if we did also, if, if we did act selfishly, but we act, acted selfishly in a rational way, the world would be a much better place. That is, the world would be great if we all acted altruistically, probably. But human nature being what it is, that might be too much to ask. Um, so... Uh, he suggests that uh, the, the, the best maybe possible world would be a world in which uh, enlightened self-interest was the rule. Uh, this is on page 52, where he says, if men were rational, they would take a more correct view of their own interest than they do at present. And if all men acted from enlightened self-interest, the world would be a paradise in comparison with what it is. I do not maintain that there is nothing better than self-interest as a motive to action, but I do maintain that self-interest, like altruism, is better when it is enlightened than when it is unenlightened. In an ordered community, it is very rare, rarely to a man's interest to do anything which is very harmful to others. The less rational man is, the oftener 
he will fail to perceive how what injures others also injures him because hatred or envy will blind him. Therefore, although I do not pretend that enlightened self-interest is the highest morality, I do maintain that if it became common, it would make the world an immeasurably better place than it is. That's very interesting. Um, that is, that when it comes to practical rationality, um, it may be that you can be acting completely rationally and be entirely selfish. But if that selfishness is enlightened, you'll realize that what's in your best interest is to do is to avoid doing anything that harms others. So he continues and says, rationality and practice may be defined as the habit of remembering all our relevant desires and not only the one which happens to be, which happens at the moment to be strongest. It's like if you, uh, if you're, you know, really engaged in a heated uh, argument with somebody or somebody's being really rude to you, you may have the urge, the desire to punch them in the face. And you know what? Punching them in the face would be really, really stupid. Because if you remember all of your relevant desires, you may have a desire. Somebody's acting really terribly. But punching them in the face, which may satisfy a certain desire, would be the stupidest thing for you to do. Because you could end up in jail. Or you might feel revulsion at yourself or guilt afterwards for hurting another human being or whatever it is. Um, so just keeping him. So oh, I think what Russell is saying is just if all of us kept in mind all of our relevant desires and didn't just focus on whatever one happened to be most prominent at the moment, uh, that that would be acting rationally. You know, um, there's no reason to get partisan here, but. You know, like, why would somebody vote for Trump? <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I'm mystified. Maybe some of you have voted for Trump. And I, I'm, I'm just curious, like, like, why did people vote for Trump? Were, were, were the people who voted, voted for Trump keeping in mind all of their relevant desires, you know, or were they letting one desire be so prominent? That 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 guy like was that actually in their enlightened self interest? And you could say the same thing. Well, why would people vote for Clinton or Obama? I guess the same thing. I mean, um, our political choices, I think, are oftentimes self destructive in the sense that we we have one relevant desire, whatever it may happen to be, and if it, if a candidate caters to that, we vote for them. But we don't take into account all of the outcomes of having that candidate become elected. Um, so ext extremely interesting, I think, two very simple propositions. One, that rationality and belief means that we should base our beliefs on evidence. The other, that rationality and practice is that we should keep in mind all of our relevant desires and act in such a way as to promote them all rather than just the one that seems most prominent at the moment. Those are That's very simple advice, but that is critical thinking. I mean, this is why I'm giving you Russell to read, um, because he's going right to the heart of critical thinking. Now, we don't have to agree with him, but he's certainly um, given us some plausible advice here, I think.